Hey everyone, it's the uh, weekly special, uh, Revolutions. Um, 20 records have been spinning in the past few days. Uh, I appreciate all your comments and input and um, positive vibes. Um, need positive, posi I need positive vibes at the moment because we've just fallen back into a, a sixth lockdown in, um, in Melbourne here. So, well, you know, so we get used to it after a while, unfortunately. Um, so it's for a week, another another week now. Um, but um, just a little bit of a, of a pre-records uh, show, um, show, show and tell <laughs> chat. Um, I was thinking of just exploring some video ideas um, on this on this channel. And a video that I'm just considering making is uh, a video about some some general thoughts about record collecting. Um, so if you have any questions you want me to answer, you know, like some, you know, um, re relating to the topic of record collecting, I mean, maybe put them in the chat, and I can um, I see if I can address this. But just just talking general buying habits and you know you know and how I feel about the whole experience I think it'd be a worthy video because I enjoy watching those myself so that's why I would make one because I, I really quite like those videos general thoughts and um, and ideas uh, more like a philosophical type of uh, discussion um, and then you know, reacting to uh, comments from some viewers, uh, somebody asked me to. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I get a lot of comments there. Well, not not a lot, but I, I, I don't always remember who said what. But someone asked me to talk about library library music, uh, and so I might do a give me ten on library music. I probably have. I don't know, like 50 sort of classic library records, um, all in all. I don't have a, a whole lot of them. Um, so I might, um, I might do that. Somebody else asked me to do something on techno, um, ambient techno and techno. So I might, um, I'm no expert. I'm expert in, you know, what's the phrase? Um, Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's me. But the thing is, with music and with any sort of domain or field where there's a vast body of knowledge, uh, the more you know, the less you understand. It's just, and for me, the more I get into music, the less I'm. I feel I'm able to talk about it. It's anyway. Just some thoughts. Um, I just want you know this channel to be more than just me doing revolutions revolution revolution okay that's fine I love showing you my uh, spins but you know maybe I could do other types of videos if you have some ideas for me to explore if you want me to do certain uh, things just let me know uh, I just you know it's nice to get some actual feedback I know I don't get a whole massive load of viewers here but what I like is the audience or the people who, who watch this are, are pretty, uh, they're pretty faithful, you know, they're pretty, they, they, you know, I always get the same, you know, few people who always watch. And what's remarkable also is the fact that a lot of you don't seem to make videos, you, your viewers, which is perfectly fine. I mean, um, you know, you don't have to be making videos to, to be interacting in this way. Uh, in fact, um, it, it's very interesting who hides behind these screen names, you know, it's, uh, you know, you can just, you know, <laughs> I find myself, you know, I, I get comments from, uh, for example, Miguel Silva from, <laughs> from Portugal, who always comments, hello, Miguel, I've never met you, I've never really talked to you, but, um, but every time you put a comment on my video, and that's great, uh, you know, maybe one day if I go to Portugal, who knows? So people like that are just, uh, you know, that's great. I don't, you know, I, I don't need to watch you to know who you are, in other words. 
So if you have any um, sort of request, or if you want me to go on a live stream, maybe one day or something, you know, I'm happy to oblige. Why not? You know, and I'm in lockdown too, so I've got time. Um, I want to start showing you some records because you must be, you know, it's been like three or four minutes, but I need to say something sometimes. So, and if you don't want, this the beautiful thing about YouTube as a whole is if you don't like it, you know, you can stop. You can just stop here. You can press, you know. Uh, some people feel obliged to leave me a dislike or something. <laughs> wow. You know, how noble, you know. I think the dislike button is a very interesting, you know, I think it's a very interesting thing, you know. Um, you have people who sort of spend time and effort making something, content for you, uh, you've made no effort at all. You turned up <laughs> and you went, this is shit. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's you know, like, like creating content is, is, is effort. You know, I have to sit here in front of you. I have to choose records. I have to think about what I'm going to talk about. It's a lot of, it's a lot of, you know, this is not taken into consideration by some people, but I don't really, I mean, you know, I'm not offended by this. Like I'm just saying in general, I have never used the dislike button ever on YouTube, not once, in 10 years on YouTube. My first record is uh, Laura Spiegel, The Expanding Universe, an absolute classic of um, minimal electronic music, very uh, sort of um, spacey and um, um, abstract, but in a, in a really great way. Uh, this is a record from 1980. And Laurie Spiegel is an American, um, you know, electronic musician. Uh, she plays all sorts of um, things um, with, I mean, things with <laughs> all sorts of keyboards and uh, and synths. Uh, and uh, the the great thing is on this, you you have the 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 the, the front cover as an interview <laughs> with Laurie Spiegel, where she explains. You know, a general philosophy, and uh, if you don't know this record, you know uh, it's. I think it's an essential, uh, minimal electronic record from the early eighties. It's yeah, it's beautiful. Um, okay, I'm so I rediscovered it this week. Um, and I'll stay in electronic. And um, I was listening to a podcast. I listened to this German podcast. Um. On, on music and they were talking about Kraftwerk uh, and uh, on about the importance of Autobahn as uh, I mean you know it, it is one of the most essential pieces of music ever made you know in, in sort of like electronic or broadly speaking in a rock canon I think uh, Autobahn is kind of a it, it's a it's a it's a crossroads of so many different styles of music um, and it influenced so many people at the same time, you know, between Bowie and um, early hip hop, you know, you know, people like Africa Bambata and people like that just were completely taken by the sound of these, these funky Germans, uh, Ralf Hutter, Hutter and uh, Florian Schneider. This is, uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic record. And the title track is iconic. And um, the second side is nice, but it's not a patch on, on side one, you know. Uh, from 1974, Autobahn, uh, the uh, Dusseldorf uh, crew. Um, and from the same time period ish, uh, I revisited um, uh, Roxy Music's, I think, third album, uh, Stranded. I just love the sleeves. I mean, you know, you know, I think, I think uh, Roxy music appealed to the uh, heterosexual male that I. That's <laughs> so true. Um, you know, uh, I'm sorry. No offense is, is, you know, no offense is being intended, but they always put such glorious um, uh, women on the sleeves. But regardless, um, the aesthetic of Roxy music is interesting. But the, the, the musical chops are, are 
even more interesting. So this is the album that they made after the departure of Brian Eno. Uh, this is the um, yeah, in between um, in between um, what's the black album called? <laughs> Lost the plot. Uh, that and Country Life. Um, yeah, I know the name of the black album, but it'll just it's it's not it's not happening to me right now. Um, so it's it's a I think it's a beautiful, you know, art rock, glam rock record. Um, you know, you got you got Street Life on this. You've got the fantastic Mother of Pearl, which is the second last song. You know, uh, Serenade, the opening song on the second side, is beautiful. If you've never gone to Roxy Music, you know, and you don't know, um, you know. It's it's a great. I think for is it for your pleasure the second album the one that I couldn't uh, remember the title for your pleasure yeah between for your pleasure and country life yeah for your pleasure is fantastic country life is great the debut is great I mean they're all really worth getting Brian Ferry and, uh, and Phil Manzanera and all the others staying on a very British uh, uh, side of things. We have the uh, absolute phenomenal broadcast with their best album, I think, Tender Buttons. Broadcast, uh, a band, were a band from Birmingham, and um, they made a string of really great sort of neo-psychedelic records. Um, if you like Stereolab, they're the closest thing to Stereolab. I mean, sometimes, at times... You, at times you could confuse the sound of the two because they're very close in sound. You can tell there's a, a they draw a lot of inspiration from things like um, crowd rock and um, you know uh, sort of um, you know sixties kind of loungy type music and and a lot of like you know that sort of classic pop era. Um, and Trish Keenan uh, unf unfortunately died very young. She caught. Did she have one of these bird flus? One. She. She. I think she. She got the flu of some sort and died. She was about forty years old. That was about ten years ago. Uh, but there was just such a, a great band. And uh, there's a song on this called "Tears in the Typing Pool," which I think is one of the most heartbreaking, beautiful songs I've ever heard. I think. You know, it'll be there up there with my favorite songs ever. Um, here is a, a hidden gem, uh, Sean Phillips, with uh, second contribution, which is a an album that I've um, championed here before. Um, people often say, "Well, it's it's Johnny, Johnny Mitchell. <laughs> it's a picture of, of of Johnny Mitchell from the back, but no." Is uh, Sean Phillips, it's an American singer songwriter. Now, this album is straight in the in the uh, goes straight in the uh, Tim Buckley territory. It's got two uh, side long um, tracks, if you will. I mean, they're different tracks, but they're sort of fused into one, a bit like the medley on Abbey Road on the second side. If you want to me to keep basic, but yes, uh, you've got this kind of idea and you've got a very sort of like Terry Callier, Tim Buckley kind of vocal delivery and the songwriting is super strong on this. This you can find this quite cheap. It's a, it's a, I think it's it's an it's it's a buried treasure really. This is a Japanese press. It's a beautiful record. I'm sorry, this might go a little bit longer than 30 minutes today. I'm talking. I'm going very slowly. Um, as I said last week, I'm reading this book on the, on the year 1971 because, well, it was 50 years ago. It's very interesting to revisit the records from that year, which is a watershed year in music. I mean, 1971 is practically, without exception, the best sort of like the most, you know, the biggest amount of quality. It was really seminal records ever produced in the one year with the exception of maybe 1977 you know but 71 is very very prolific and i'm revisiting 71 records so this week the 1971 classic is uh, naturally by jj kale what a fantastic record 
I mean, if you're not into that kind of music, then, you know, you might dismiss this. The cover is kind of ridiculous too. <laughs> this sort of like, what is it, a, a, a badger or something or whatever it is <laughs> with a waistcoat. waistcoat. Um, so naturally is an album where you can really see the extent of the of the genius of of JJ Kale, the Oklahoma native, uh, his delivery is so laid. That's the type the, the term that you would you would use is laid back. It's very. You've got classics like um, Call the Doctor. Or Magnolia is absolutely phenomenal. What a song, Magnolia. If you want a good example of what this album sounds like, just pause this video and listen to Magnolia. It's so touching and heartfelt and, and, and precise. Like his vocal delivery is just beautiful. Um, and After Midnight, of course, is... So JJ Kell naturally, would, this would be very easily one of my all-time favorite albums. And I have no... I make no bones about that. It's If you don't know about this album, you should. Um, a Brazilian segment for you here. I went into my Brazilian shelf. So the way I organize my records, um, um, I mean, if everyone's got their own system. One of my things is I've got a, all my Brazilian records, whatever they are, you know, um, whether they're, you know, Brazilian pop or jazz, they're all filed in the same, um, you know, uh, in my Brazil, Brazil corner. Uh, and Sometimes I just go into a, a, one of my sections and just pull out a few records. That's, that's what I did there. I pulled out a few records. Now this here is a bona fide classic of Brazilian music. Uh, here is uh, Expresso 2222 by uh, Gilberto Gil. This is, I mean, the packaging of this, uh, the, the record is wedged in the middle. You've got this kind of gimmick ish cover there with that I don't know if I can show you yeah like it opens fully there when you've got um, this is obviously an original press um, one of the most expensive records I've ever bought really I bought this at the flea market in Paris I think uh, it was um, yeah, yeah it was the right price <laughs> but I don't regret it's a fabulous album I mean it's one of the greatest MPBs Sort of, uh, you know, very psychedelic, but but on the on, on really on the on the in in the MPB wheelhouse. Uh, and if you don't know what MPB is, you know, it's uh, Brazilian pop music more or less. So you got people like Gilberto Gil, the of Veloso, uh, George Ben, Joe, uh, Miguel. Help me. <laughs> uh, you've got uh, you know um, Gal Costa and uh, Elis Regina and. All sorts of great people. Express It 22 has got some amazing, quite well-known songs. If you're into the, um, you know, like if you've got, for example, the Tropicalia compilations from so Soul, Soul Jazz Records, uh, you'll recognize some of the songs. I'm not going to attempt launch into pronouncing uh, Brazilian Portuguese because that's not... <laughs> It's not in my in my uh, section of expertise. Other languages, yes, but not that one. Um, super record, super super record. Okay, here's another beautiful uh, Brazilian record. I bought this one. I remember last year during a long lockdown. Uh, it's called Synchro Jazz. Uh, Synchro Jazz Live. Yes, yeah, synchro. It says that there. It's a reissue on Mad About Records, a Portuguese label. Um, this is a fantastic mm, sort of jazz fusion with a little progressive touch on it. Uh, from 19, I think, 80 or something, 1980, 1981, which um, uh, is live. It's a live uh, 19, yeah, 1980. It was released on Poitou Records. And um, it's got electric piano, like some you know, really, really funky bass, and the drums are all over the shop. It's great synchro jazz uh, live on Madabat Records. And here's another, another Brazilian absolute. 
I think I think I'd, I'd throw the, the phrase must have if you like uh, jazz funk uh, jazz funk funky fusion uh, from the 70s uh, Cesar Mariano uh, this record is just dynamite absolute dynamite you know, you've got the spirit of like bands like Placebo, the uh, Belgian band, uh, Cortex, uh, Azimuth, the the Brazilian band, comes to mind. Very funky drums. The keyboards are f they're fucking hard. You know, like they they they're not kidding. This record is a scorcher of record. Um, if you've never heard uh, this record, it's it's just a jazz funk behemoth, really. Like it's it's. Uh, it's a stunning, stunning record. Um, earlier today, I was, I'm just staying in a sort of a psych, frog-ish wheelhouse. I was revisiting the free design, uh, and this one's called, uh, uh, this one is called, uh, Star Time, Stars Time Bubbles Love. Uh, this is, uh, the sixth, I think, album from the Free Design. The Free Design, where a bunch of siblings, the Dedrick, Dedrick sibling, the uh, brothers and sisters, I think that's their their name, their surname is Dedrick, I think, yeah, Dedrick, that's right. So uh, uh, they hailed from New York, and they made this sort of bubblegum sunshine, like it's more like sunshine pop very bright and bouncy music, a bit like the association or to an extent, a bit of early Beach Boys or the fifth dimension in a sort of like more psychedelic soul kind of way. Um, and uh, this record is uh, is a really nice record. It's not the best. I think Kites Are Fun is, much, is a much better record. But today was a gloomy day. We are locked down. I played this. It just made me... There's a cover version of Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, this to, to give you a bit of an idea of the general direction of this record. Um, but nonetheless, if you find this cheap, you know, it's a good, it's a good little record. Um, here is a French-Canadian, uh, like a Quebec uh, prog record. Uh, this is Michel Mador. Uh, it's called the Comuso Accord. Mm, uh, Michel Mador um, uh, is, uh, yeah, he's, uh, I think he's, he's from Montreal, uh, perhaps, I don't know, maybe, I might be wrong, you'll correct me. Uh, this is one of the highlights of Quebec uh, progressive music, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, I have a few really great titles, and this is one from 1976. Um, he's like a, a little bit like a gong record, uh, very space rock, uh, full of like ARP synth and mini Moogs and you know, just really sp yeah, space rock uh, all the way, um, you know, um, a little sort of Hawkwind meets gong, but soft, you know, not Hawkwind just goes hard. This guy, you know, uh, is like a He's like a he's like a guru <laughs> of sorts. Uh, yeah, 1976 will come into a court. If you like, if you like um, gong, that'll probably be your thing. Continuing with uh, a um, an obscure record, a gift from many years ago from my friend uh, Mike Kelly, uh, Bostonian Re Reggie, as he used to be known on the VC. Uh, he sent me this record many, many years ago. I can't remember when, but it would have been at least, I don't know, seven, eight years ago or something. Mike, you might be able to tell me. Um, I talk to Mike almost daily, really. Uh, he's a, we met once in New York, and uh, yeah, we really, really, really hit it off. Um, it's called Gold Cosmos and, Cosmos. and to start with, I will say this is a kind of really sexy, handmade record so here you've got a uh, recycled uh, classical let's see it's a you can see the i don't know if you can see but it's been spray painted in gold this was a this was a a handle handle messiah i think or something like that uh it's it's definitely hand handle the uh, composer it's been reappropriated spray painted gold and then they've stuck this 
thing on each side. I mean, that's just impossibly cool. I mean, so this is a guy called Joshua Joshua Burkett. B U R K B can't spell B U R K double uh, uh, E double T, and uh, this guy plays a sort of yeah psychedelic folk. Um, well, some of the guests on the on on this record include um, uh, Ben Chesney. Now, in the early two thousand, which is this record from the early two thousand, there was. A wave of um, of musicians, which they loosely classified under the banner of freak folk, uh, uh, new weird America, as it was known. You had uh, Devandra Bernhardt and Joan Newsom and uh, Comets on Fire and uh, PG Six and uh, uh, Josephine Foster and the Supposed. All all records that I loved at the time. I still really listen to them once in a while, you know, um, and this, you know, like this guy, Ben Chesney was in Comets on Fire and he was also in, he was in two bands, uh, Comets on Fire and, can't remember the other one, um, and PG6, this guy called PG6 was also one of the mainstays of this like freak folk, so it gives you an idea, you've got this kind of like, yeah, psych, psych folk, Lots of instrumental tunes, you know. You you are firmly set in the in the sort of like pentangle meets like a, a sort of alternative folk kind of um, sphere. Can't talk this afternoon. I'm sorry. You know what I've been doing all day long? I've been online with students face to face on camera uh, for. You know, since um, you know, eight thirty this morning, it's now mm, four thirty-five. I've been on camera for all that time. So, if I don't make very much sense, if I'm going too slowly for you, that's why. I'll continue. So this record's great. It's called Gold Cosmos. It's one, uh, an edition of five hundred, handmade, beautiful. Um, yeah, if you like, mm, yeah, this is if you like. Um, it's a, I don't even know what you can classify as, as it's psych folk. Look it up. It's, just do some work. It's like I said to my kids online, do some work. <laughs> uh, Lanquility uh, by uh, Sandra, uh, arguably one of the greatest records by the um, um, the great band leader. Uh, this has just been reissued recently uh, from Strut in a box set of like four records in like super deluxe 45 rpm gosh if i get into this audio file debate you'll never hear the end of it um but uh this is my reissue copy and it it works perfectly i don't need a box set with four records in it it would take too much space on my shelf that's it that's my, my rationale for not having it is it takes too much space. I mean the price, yeah. Here you can find it for like hundred and fifty dollars, hundred thirty, hundred and thirty, forty dollars. It's copies, but not for me. I, I'm, I'm happy with this. This is a great, great, um, you know, very straight um, sort of jazz fusion record. It's one of the most sort of like directly listenable. Like, for example, you've never heard Sun Ra before. You wouldn't watch this channel anyway. Um, Let's just imagine you you've never heard Sandra before, and you want to get a, an in point tranquility. Enough said. Um, one of my, if not my favorite artists of the past decade, really. I've said this many times. I've said this many many times. But Niels Fram, along with Floating Points, along with Fortet, along with maybe I mean there's, there's a few people that are up there. And my favorite, favorite artist of the past decade, uh, Niels from Spaces. This is a double live album, um, which uh, was uh, recorded live between 2012 and 2013. This is just a superb, superb sort of goes between cl modern classical and there's electronic beats in there. There's it's it, you know. 
this guy loves you know i think i think he, he loves modern classical solo piano as much as he likes boards of canada so you've got a mixture you 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 know the two meet somewhere I and mean, it's nils fran i saw him i was lucky enough to see him live a couple of years ago in melbourne and he was a super cool guy he set up his after the gig he set up his table outside of the of the of the venue and we just all got to talk to him he was super cool um yeah much love for Niels Fran. If you want an in point with Niels Fran, this is good. Or I very, very highly recommend um, Felt. Felt is just an exquisite, ex little, exquisite record. You know, um, I've been, <laughs> I've, 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 you know, I'm struggling. <laughs> okay, uh, I've revisited Mule Variations by Tom Waits. I think still one of his best records. Uh, it's you know in the late period of Tom Waits, so I think you can divide Tom Waits into yeah at least three different periods. At the very early years, um, you know, Small Change and those records, Night Night Hawks at the at the at the diner and those kinds of records, and then you've got so this mid period, which is probably his best, like Swordfish, Trombones, and Rain Dogs, uh, Frank's Wild Years, and Two Point Bone, Bone Machine as well. And then his later period, I think this is his best work. His best work, really, of the later period. Alice is good as well, but this is really quite up there with his best records. It starts with this amazing uh, song, Big in Japan. <laughs> as if Tom Waits was big in Japan, but no, it's just beautiful. Uh, and... Uh, Les Claypool on bass. How is that in, in this band? Yeah, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful record. Um, just say, uh, it's a great record. Um, I want to avoid saying beautiful and great all the time. A spectacular record. Um, here are two English classics or British classics. Sorry, not English, British classics. Um, here is. Uh, the debut album by Eurythmics in the garden, superb record. Um, you get you really get the seeds of Eurythmics, uh, the sound that you would get on later more produced records. Like you know, if you listen to something like um, Sweet Dreams, it's way more produced, but I think they had more means as well. But this 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 features uh, contribution. Well, the, for starters, it's Connie Plank producing this. But it's got contribution from uh, Jackie Libertside from Can and Olga Holger Tsukai is on this as well, from Can as well. You've got um, someone else that I'm forgetting. You've got Holger Tsukai. You've got and Clem Burke, uh, the drummer from Blondie, is on this too, um, and uh, Marcus Stockhausen on brass. You know, it's just it's a great. You know, sort of, yeah, new wave post-punk uh, record, but it, it it's very understated. I think, I think it's probably underrated. Uh, I imagine uh, from nineteen seventy, I don't know, seventy, no, eighty one. Excuse me, eighty one. Now here's a, a, a masterpiece. I mean, just let's just say, this blows my mind. This is the missing link between Nick Drake and. Let's do a lineage. Nick Drake, Ben Watts. You know, think of, of somebody in this modern era that, that uh, no, there's no one. This is such a fantastic record. It's called North Marin, North Marin Drive by Ben Watts. Ben Watts is the guitar player in Everything But The Girl. And if I could highly, highly recommend one record in this, uh, in this pile, it's probably... I mean, no, there's lots of them. But this is a fantastic record. It's just him with his guitar, his acoustic guitar, or a bit of piano. Uh, I love his voice. I love his delivery. He's got, as I said, Nick Drake is the closest thing I can think of. It's like a very, very uh, pastoral, very quintessentially English record, sounding record. It sounds a little bit like what the sleeve looks like. You know? It's like 
We live in England, it's raining, we're miserable, but we're gonna make the most, most of it anyway. Sorry, Alan, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I lived there for five years, I can tell you. I was living, I was living in England for, for a long time. And Mark and John, hello Mark and John, you're, if you're watching this. Um, Kant, Aussie, and the mystic revelation of Rastafar I, Tales of Mozambique, uh, a superb, superb, um, you know, I mean, it's a reggae record, but it's certainly not roots reggae. It's got lots of brass. It's kind of got elements of jazz and, and reggae fused together. Um, to what genre exactly, I couldn't even tell you precisely, but this was reissued a bunch of years ago by um, Soul Jazz Records. And I think it's, if you can pick this 2016, I'd really like Grand, Grand, Nation, Grand Nation by... by uh, I'm, I'm still to pick that up one day. I mean, you know, everything uh, needs to uh, to be picked up uh, in the, the right time. But I uh, very highly recommend uh, this. It's just sublime, um, spiritual, spiritual reggae jazz records. Not spiritual jazz, but, but spiritual jazz reggae. <laughs> um... um this is the record I was playing just before this video, uh, rock, rhythm and blues, beat, underground, country pop. Today's sound, one of the absolute masterpieces of library music. We're talking about that at the start of the video. I was saying I might make it, give me 10 on library music. I, I, I think this will go in there. It's a, uh, a key record by um, uh, Piero Omigliani, uh, the, yeah, one of the Italian masters of the genre and uh, here we've got a mixture of really funky funky jazzy Italian grooves lots of organ the drums are thick I mean this would have been sampled a million times it's what library music is good for sampling to make hip-hop songs um, yeah uh, this is obviously a reissue now you know it's nothing to me. I like. I don't mind reissues. I don't have an any. I mean, if I was to find this as an original, you know, I would pay a lot of money for it. Probably. Uh, this, yeah, this has got a, a a a really large cast. You've got you got flutes, trombones, Hammonds, clavichord, piano, guitars, bass, uh, uh, marimbas. You've got. Uh, Fender Rhodes, you've got Moog, you've got percussions. Like this cast is just enormous. Like it, it, they, and they make a sound, and they make a really great sort of funky tight sound. A couple more. I'm almost finished. Um, here is a record that I've just rediscovered. It was on my shelf for many years. Uh, Anthology by the uh, Whitefield Brothers. This re this record re reminds me of my good lost friend I mean, not lost but someone i haven't spoken to for many years not because we're not in bad terms or anything we're just you know just disconnected jeff greer yeah, jeff greer had a band called uh schematics for for a blank a blank stare and uh you know in the early days of the vc uh, uh, he made a couple of records he's pressed them on vinyl we all got them and i still got mine I mean, his two albums are fantastic he sent me all the test presses. You know, I've got, I've got everything. I've got everything schematic from for for a blank stay. I've got, you know, handmade CDs. Um, I've got, you know, I've got sheet music. I, I mean, I'll tell you, I've got. I think I'm, I must be the number one fan or something. Um, and one one time he sent me this record, uh, anthology, Whitefield Brothers, a very interesting mixture between funk, jazz, hip hop, and Ethio jazz, really. I don't know how to even, you know, if you like mulatto, uh, this is Daniel Ali. The Whitefield brothers are from Munich in Germany, and they're also they. Some of their members are also in a band called the Poets of Rhythm. Um, so they're a German funk band basically, um, and this is a double record. It's just it's fire all the way. This is fire, fire all the way. You, you really, really, if you like funk and ethio jazz, this is from 
2009 on um, on Stones. Oh, now again, Stones Stones Throw Records. Now again, there we go. Yeah, don't hesitate. Last but not least is a modern record. I mean, I always you know champion modern records. It's not many, and it's like like brand new records. Um, this I bought. I don't know. Three months ago, maybe I would say, uh, and I haven't played it a lot. Uh, the Sons of Kemet, Black to the Future. Uh, so there's uh, this is the second album. Uh, it is very much like the first one. I don't think if you've got the first one, this will not surprise you very much. You know, once you you're used to the sounds of the first Sons of Kemet, this is. It's maybe a little bit more black consciousness oriented, a bit more Black Lives Matter oriented than the first one. But nonetheless, it's, um, it's a great record from this year. And uh, I bought it because I thought I like the first one a lot. So, uh, yeah, Afro Jazz, you know, lots of tuba by uh, good old, um, uh, what's his name? What's, what's, the, what's the astounding tuba player on this? Um, oh, you got Angel Angel Bat Dawid on this as well. Yeah, she's she's on this. Uh, Theon Cross, yeah, obviously. Shabaka Hutchins on woodwinds. Theon Cross on tuba. Tom Skinner on drums and uh, Edward Wakili Hick on drums. Plus, yeah, as I said, Angel Bat Dawid. Nath Nath Nathaniel Cross appeared as well on trumpets. Yeah, Sons of Kemet from this year. All right, people. Uh, it's a long video, uh, but some content for you. Enjoy and uh, talk to me. Leave me some comments. I love you all.